my name is Kevin. I'm a, a resident medical officer at Royal North Shore Hospital at Sydney in Australia. Um, and I have a keen interest in doing urology. Um, so my research was based on preoperative frailty um, and its association with uh, different success rates in trial voids, um, initially post-TURP or post-TURP surgery um, in patients undergoing um, TURP surgery for bladder outlet obstruction secondary to benign prostate hyperplasia, most commonly. Um, we found that greater preoperative frailty based off um, a clinical frailty score or scale was more likely to uh, involve longer um, hospitalization stays as well as uh, lower rates of success for initial trial avoids uh, or removal of catheters post operations. Um, and as a result, we feel that um, the use of this scale can be used preoperatively to help um, identify patients who are at increased risk of frailty and may need a bit of either preoperative counseling or um, uh, help with decision making and management of patient expectations postoperatively and possibly optimization of patients' um, health preoperatively as well. For me, I believe it's a multimodal or um, has many factors uh, as a result of the cause for um, decreased success rates in trial avoid with frailty. Um, it could be reduced mobility um, as frail patients are more likely to be less mobile. Um, they have reduced bladder compliance usually um, with the increased aging process and then um, possibly undertreated urine infections or just other comorbidities that may actually just result in them being not as fit and healthy and as normal as a young person that's not frail. Um, it could also be that we have increased operations. Uh, sorry, we, it could be that we have uh, increased prostate size commonly, um, and then this results in greater operation times or post-operative swelling from the operation itself, resulting in possibly need for a longer catheter stay. For my study, I didn't look at specifically age as whether or not that was a factor that um, would have reduced the success rates of trial avoid. Um, I could go back and run the data, but I feel as though age in this scenario has been somewhat uh, put under the umbrella of frailty um, in that frailty also incorporates age to some extent. Not all old people are frail and not all frail people are old, but there is a general correlation with age and frailty. Um, with regards to diabetes, we haven't looked particularly at specific comorbidities of the patients in our study, but I do feel as though diabetes may be a risk factor um, for reduced trial avoid success rates, either through increased sugar in the urine, leading to increased urinary tract infections or rates of infection, which may um, reduce success rates of trial avoids, or possibly um, due to neurogenic complications um, secondary to the diabetes. Prostate volume and resected volume weren't studied in this study, and unfortunately I can't make much of a comment about that formally, um, but I do feel as though larger prostate volume or larger resected volume may have a small part or big part in um, reduced success rates of trial avoids as well. I think it should be something that should be considered um, in the pre-operative planning phase. I think it's the scale that I'm using is uh, relatively easy to use. It only takes about half a minute to a minute um, to decide whether or not the patient's frail or not frail. And half of that time, uh, oh, and most of the study, oh, sorry, most of the um, assessment is done pre-operatively anyway, when you ask them of the comorbidities or of their social situation and how they get about their everyday life and activities. I think, using the scale is good in that we can stratify how much of um, a chance they have of having either a prolonged hospital stay or a reduced success rate from catheter uh, trial avoid post-operatively and then from there the patients can set expectations of themselves of where they should be in say 
two days, or one day after the operation, two days after the operation, or one week after the operation, and so on and so forth. Clinicians, not just urologists, but for anyone who's using this frailty score, it gives you an early indication of how frail a patient is. And if you know that a patient's going to be frail, you can use this to help put in preoperative planning steps, such as a early referral to a geriatrician or other appropriate subspecialties or allied health staff to help them plan for the patient to optimize their comorbidities or plan for a discharge destination post-operatively. If the patient's frail and unable to go home post-operatively, then they might need a short stay in rehab, which could be organized earlier on um, rather than after the operation. And then um, it also sets patient expectations and family expectations too. So families can start thinking about um, what they can do with regards to how they would expect their, uh, the patient to go. And then from there, they can make plans as well. Uh, generally speaking, we follow these patients up at the three to six, oh, sorry, six to six week to um, three month mark um, postoperatively um, as a definite follow up point, either via phone or via um, a clinic. At that stage, I'm saying most of them would still be catheter free in this situation. Um, however, I don't have any actual data to, uh, to um, back me up at this situation. Um, and we haven't formally followed up any of our patients at current over the one year period. It would be something that we would like to do. Um, and it would be something that would most likely be easily done by looking at the records. Um, and it's something that we could definitely consider if we were to repeat study with a larger um, proportion of patients or uh, just uh, more hospitals added to or more, more centers added to the study itself. 